Hi friends, welcome to the Creativity for Kids Summer Camp. I'm Meredith and I'm the brand ambassador for Faber Castell USA Creativity for Kids. Just a few notes about today's class. Um, this class will be recorded. So if you miss something, don't worry about it. You can always go back and check it out. I can't hear or see you, um, but there are plenty of other options to um, react during this class. So in the chat box, you can send me a message or ask me questions there. Um, during the webinar, I'm going to ask you for your opinion. So a little vote here box will pop up on your screen. And then you can go ahead and vote before the little box goes away. Um, in uh, Today we will be unboxing one of our classic kits the Creativity for Kids Hide and Seek Rock Painting Kit. So let's go ahead and get started. I'll open our box. Okay. And let's see what we have inside. Wow, that's a lot. All right, so first I wanna point out, we have some really great samples of racks on our box. So you can use this for inspiration. We have our waterproof paints. So this is made to paint your rocks and then you can put your rocks outside in nature and if it rains or if they get wet the paint won't come off it won't um, smear off onto the ground or anything like that so this is nice special acrylic paint so with that in mind you are going to want to get some paper towels or like a tablecloth and cover your surface and if you have nice clothes on you might want to put on either a smock or um, a play shirt so you don't get any kind of paint on your clothes. You'll also need some water and you might want a pencil too, just in case. All right, so we have our rocks and we give you one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten rocks. So if your friends are around, you and your friends can be painting rocks together. So that's fun. What else do we have in here? We have our thin, our fine point brush. And this is for um, making details or little lines and stuff. And what I'm doing is I'm just running my finger over the um, bristles because we put a little bit of glue on there just to keep the bristles nice and tight. And then this is our broad tip brush. So this is great for putting down a layer of paint and covering large areas. We have our sponge and this sponge will be for our transfers. So we give you four metallic transfers and then two sheets of other transfers with really fun faces and very summertimey things and little cute animals. So we'll get to that in our class. We'll just put those aside for now. And then finally, we have our little Creativity for Kids social media stickers. So after you're done painting your rocks, you can put a little sticker on the back of your rock and when you go hide it out in the world, you can, um, whomever finds it, can go to our Creativity for Kids social media page and post it up there. And we'll put those aside for now too. All right, and we have our handy dandy instructions. All right, so what it says, cover your work surface. We already went over that. Um, wear a smock or play clothes. Um, the paint can settle, so if you open up your paint and you see that there's a little bit of wateriness on the top, you can just use your paintbrush and mix it together um, because that's pretty normal for paint to settle. 
and let's go ahead. Okay, so what we like to do is prepare our rocks for painting them with many different colors. And to do that, we put a layer of white paint down first. The white paint um, acts like a base coat. So for rocks that are a little bit darker, um, the white paint will help all of the other colors turn um, become much brighter when you paint over it. And since these are natural, real rocks, you might feel a little bit of dust or dirt on them. You can just wipe them off. You can use like a wet paper towel or just rinse them underwater. Um, but they're really not that bad. So here we go. Now, while we put our base layer, our white coat of paint on, you can start thinking about what the shape of these rocks might look like. So let's say you want to um, paint a sunshine. Well, one of these rocks might look more like a sunshine than another one. Um, or if you want to paint a butterfly, maybe if you turn your rock this way, you can kind of start to see a butterfly wing in the shape of this rock. So that's one way painting rocks is very unique because you don't really know um, what you can paint on the rock until you try. And using the shape of the rock is very helpful. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put a layer of white down on our rocks. And this paint dries pretty quickly. So you don't have to worry about it drying overnight. Um, this should dry pretty quick. So by the time I'm done painting, the last of these five rocks, the first rock should be pretty dry. So then we can start adding color to it. So this is so exciting. This is the first class of our summer camp. So I'm very, very happy that you're here with me today and doing some crafting on this wonderful summer day. And painting rocks is super fun. You can do it any time of year. And we've had this kit out for a while and we have seen such creative rocks being shared on our social media page. So I hope that um, once you are done creating, that either your parent or an older friend can take a picture of what you've done and we can see your creativity on our rocks. And so you might have a question um, should we paint the entire rock, meaning the back of the rock and the, the top of the rock? So you don't have to, you can if you want to. I'm just going to be painting the top surfaces of the rock. Um, but yeah, you can definitely paint both the top and the bottom, whatever you would like to do. So here we go. And while we're doing this, let's start thinking about what the first rock we paint, what we want it to be. So with summer in mind, I would like you guys to think about going to the beach. And going to the beach, a couple of things come to mind, like starfish, um, other kinds of fish, beach balls. Uh, what else? Volleyball nets. So how about if we take a little poll and see, I would love to see your thoughts on what we should do first. Should we do a starfish? 
should we do a beach ball or should we do some other kind of tropical fish that you might see in the ocean at the beach? So a vote here back should pop up on your screen and then you can go ahead and choose what you would like to see me paint first. And if you're following along and you have this kit at home, or if you just have your own paint and rocks at home, um, we'll see what you come up with too as, as what you're going to paint. So, all right, starfish, beach ball, or fish. Let's see how much time we have. Okay, well, there we go. 100% of the people. Oh, wait, no, there's a tie. There's a tie between starfish and beach ball. Okay, so we need a tiebreaker. So I'm going to do eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Catch a tiger by the toe. If you fell out of eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Starfish it is. Okay, that was exciting. Thank you, friends, for voting. That was really cool. All right, so I should just mention when you are changing colors, when you're switching colors, so I just had white on my brush, you can just go ahead and rinse your brush, dry it on a little paper towel, and you're ready for your next color. So you can start, since we're doing a starfish, and we kind of already have it in our mind what a starfish looks, looks like, it's a star, shape with like little dots on it and if you don't know what a starfish looks like you could always look up a picture um so you can just paint it directly on your rock or you can use a pencil and you can kind of draw out um, your design first and then paint it in so that's what i'm going to do i'm going to draw it out first and then paint it in so let's look at our rocks and decide which one we want to put a starfish on. I think this one. So what I can see here would be the starfish. Oh, this one is so neat because it has all these cool little dots in it and that's up on texture. Um, okay, so the starfish will be up here. And if you can't see my pencil marks, don't worry. I'm gonna be painting over it anyway. So you'll be able to see um, the starfish then. There you go. Hello, starfish, welcome to the world. Mm -hmm. And I know I'm going to want to put a friendly little face on this little starfish. So I'll hold it up here if you can see. And I think I might actually wanna put some water in here too. So this is actually a good time to mention, if you want your background color to be something other than white, now would be the time to do it. So I would love my starfish to look like um, he was coming up out of the water. So I'm gonna do some water, some blue, I'm gonna mix some white and blue and create um, like a watery background. So although I just drew our starfish on our rock, I'm gonna paint over it with our blue and white and just mix it together a little bit. So mixing paint is super fun. When you mix paint, you take the lighter color and I'm just gonna use my paper towel here as my palette. You take a lighter color that you're mixing and you put a blob of that down on your palette. And then you take the darker color and you keep adding a little bit by little bit of the darker color until you get the color that you want. So just like this. So just to show you, the white and the blue made this color here. And then the regular blue is that dark. So we made quite a lighter blue. And I'm gonna do a little bit of a gradient. 
So I'll show you what that means. I'm going to put this light blue on our rock just like this and cover the whole thing. And actually, you can still kind of see the pencil mark underneath, which is great. Then I don't have to redraw our little starfish. So now, while the paint is still wet, I'm going to put just a little bit of darker blue on my brush. And then I'm going to go ahead and paint onto the wet rock with that darker blue. And this is going to create um, a gradient. So it's going from dark to light. And you can do this with any color that you want, but the key is to work uh, while the paint is still wet. So just add the color in while the paint is still wet. Oh, this is so relaxing. I do love painting so much. I hope you guys are having fun too. This is a wonderful way to start a Monday afternoon and to start our very fun Creativity Club summer camp. All right, so here's our gradient. We have our darker area into our lighter area. And if you didn't get it exactly how you want, no worries, you can do it again. You're given 10 rocks, so there's plenty of time to practice. Okay, so I always like to close up my paints after I'm done using them, just so I don't spill them. All right. So while this one is drying, and I'm gonna come back to our starfish, but I'd like to make another background color on one of these rocks. So let's take another poll. Thinking of summertime, thinking of some summertime treats, um, I would love to know if you would like to see me paint or paint with me an ice cream cone, a popsicle, or a milkshake. So out of all of those three summertime treats, should we paint an ice cream cone, a popsicle, or a milkshake? I can't wait to see what you guys vote for. So while you guys are voting, I'm gonna start painting some color as a background for these racks too. And I think we'll have about 30 seconds to vote. So get your votes in. I'll put yellow in here. Okay. Five, four, three, two, one. Let's see. Do we have our votes? And not yet. All right. I think maybe we're all very focused on painting. So maybe we don't have a lot of interaction with our votes right now. But I think making a ice cream cone would be adorable. So let's go ahead and do the ice cream cone. Okay, very good. So an ice cream cone. Let's see, what would be a good background color for an ice cream cone? I think green. And we'll mix it up a little bit just in case the paint settled. Here we go. And I'm gonna paint one more with a background color just so I can show you guys um, how to use the transfers because the transfers are very fun. Here's our green, our yellow. We have our starfish blue. 
And this one here is so big, I can't not use it. It's a perfect canvas for created for creating. So I'm going to make that one a rainbow. Kind of similar to this. So a little bit of color, yellow, orange, red, purple, blue. I think that'll be pretty. And mixing these paints is really easy. So I'm going to put down the yellow just like this and just go over a little further on the rock and then grab some red and put red down. But then I'm going to overlap the red and the yellow and make orange. Just like that. And then with the red, I'm going to overlap it with blue to make all right, I wonder, do you all know what red and blue mixed together makes? Purple. So we're going to mix those two colors to make purple. There we go. And then the last color I'll add in there will be green. And blue and green make teal. So we'll just overlap that and have a pretty, pretty teal color in there. All right, so all of our rocks, almost all of our rocks, four out of five are, of our rocks have a wonderful background color to them now. And if you want your paint to look a little bit more opaque, like this one does, this one's really nice and yellow, you can put two coats on and that'll make it look more opaque. Where this one, I just put one coat on, so it's a little bit lighter. Okay, let's go ahead and make our wonderful little starfish. All right, starfish, what color do you want to be? Yellow? Okay, we'll make you yellow. So I'm going to use my little thin tip brush. All right. And get our yellow going. And again, I can still see my pencil marks. So I'm just going to fill in my little starfish shape that I drew with the yellow paint. Oh, wow. Just thinking about being at the beach is so relaxing. I wonder how many of my friends out here went to the beach or went camping or went hiking. How many friends out there have had a very fun summer? There we go. Hello, little starfish. It would be wonderful to name our starfish. Let's see, what should we name our starfish? How about Sarah? Sarah the starfish. All right. So Sarah the starfish, like I mentioned, I would love to give Sarah the starfish a little face. And let's check out what kind of, um, transfers we have. Oh, here we go. Here's a face. It's a very fun face with heart eyes and a smile. So maybe we can use that face. Or here's a goofy one. We have a goofy face, one with um, some sunglasses or regular glasses. Oh, maybe we'll... Okay, so we have uh, lots of options. We'll get to that in a minute after our starfish after Sarah dries, we can put the transfer on. Um, I do want to add a little bit of detail, like I said, 
the little dots that go around the starfish. I'm going to use the end of my fine tip brush. So here's where the bristles are. I'm turning it around and I'm using the plastic end. So I'm just going to gather a little bit of paint on the end of my paintbrush and just make little dots all the way around Sarah. Hey. And this is a great way to add the perfect little detail of dots to your paintings. And it's pretty quick. It's quick and easy, and it has really good results. Just like that. Doop, doop, doop. And one more. There. All right, cool. All right, Sarah, we're setting you aside to dry. All right, so this one I think we were gonna use as our ice cream cone. And as you can see, it's already dry. It's ready to be painted. So let's go ahead and make our ice cream cone. Um, I would like to make a strawberry flavor. It, uh, like I love ice cream, so I'm gonna make this a couple different flavors. I think strawberry and grape and let's just see how those two fit. So again, I'm going to use my pencil and just draw it out so you guys can follow along with me. So this is one of those ice cream cones that are in the shape of a triangle, just like that. And I'm going to make that orange. And then one scoop of ice cream is going to be strawberry. So that's going to be light pink. And then the top scoop of ice cream is going to be grape. Although I don't know if I've ever had grape ice cream, but I do want to use my purple. So if you can think of any other ice cream that is purple, that's what this represents. And then I'm putting a cherry on the top just because I think most, most everything is better with a cherry on top. So here we go. And I said I was going to paint the cone orange. So there we are. Hey, I love how easy it is to layer paint um, this paint. It works so well. Here's our ice cream cone. And sometimes these types of ice cream cones have that um, little pattern where it's like cross, 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 and then the other way, cross, cross, cross. If you want to put that detail in your ice cream cone, you can do that with um, a permanent marker. Sometimes a permanent marker has a thinner tip than our fine tip paintbrush. So if you wanted to put those in, or you could even use your um, paintbrush and just dip the tip of it into your paint. And then you could add that detail on as well. So right now I'm making my strawberry. So like we did before, I put down our white paint first, and then I added the red into it. And I think I want a little bit more white, so it's a little bit lighter. Okay, here we go, just like that. And as ice cream cones sometimes do in the summer, they drip a little. So I'm adding a little bit of a drip down the front and side of our ice cream cone. There we go. All right, now it's time for our purple. And 
and I'll grab some white. And put it down on our paper. And a little bit of purple. And here is our grape or purple ice cream, whatever flavor you can imagine that is. All right, just like that. And again, we can make it kind of drip down a little if you want onto the strawberry ice cream, but maybe not too much. There you go, just like that. <gasps> Delicious. And now we need our cherry on top. So I wonder how many of my friends out there did mint chocolate chip ice cream, which is also one of my favorite ice creams. Oh, actually my strawberry ice cream could have little bits of strawberry in it. So I'm gonna put some little dots to make it look like little specks of strawberry in there. Yum. And that gives it a little bit more interest as well. The more detail you add to paintings or your drawings or your artwork, um, I think the more realistic or the more, more interesting they become all right. Oh, I do. I, I think I'm going to add a couple little specks of the dark purple as if that's little bits of grape in my grape ice cream. So you can see a little bit more interesting when you add a little bit more detail. Cool. All right, ice cream cone, you look delicious. We'll set you aside for now. Okay, now Sarah, our starfish is still drying because I put the yellow on a little bit thick. So we still have to let her dry before we put a transfer on. But I do have a couple racks that are already dry. So this yellow one and let's check if our rainbow one is dry. Oh yeah, our rainbow one is dry too. So let's start with our little yellow um, rock and we can put a transfer on that one. So how about if we put this adorable little turtle onto the yellow rock? Now what you need for using the transfers is a pair of scissors so you can cut the transfer out. And you'll notice when you're cutting, there is a clear sheet over top of the image. So you're gonna peel that clear sheet off, just like that. And we're going to lay the transfer down, facing the rock, just like that. And kind of push it down. It might be a little bit sticky, which is helpful to keep it in place. And now we need our little sponge. We're gonna get our sponge wet and then dab the wetness onto our transfer. And transfers work really well on really flat rocks. They work on rounded rocks too but you just have to make sure that you wet or dampen the entire transfer so it kind of molds around the rock. And just kind of push it down a little bit and you can kind of see if the transfer is pulling away from the paper and here, you can kind of see that it is. So we want to make sure that it's all the way pushed down and attached to the rock before we remove the paper. 
and most of the time it works out pretty well. Ta-da! So here's our little turtle. Now, these transfers, once they're dry and you can kind of pat it dry just gently so you don't ruin the line art, um, you can go ahead and use your paint and paint them in. So we can make our little turtle green or teal, which, or it's green and teal, which I would like to do. So we'll put, I think I'll make his little head green and the outside of his shell teal and then all of his little designs inside a combination of teal and green. So I'm doing all the green first. And if you paint over one of the lines, don't worry about it. Like I said, you can always go over it with a permanent marker or you can use the tip of your paintbrush and just paint over it again. So. So I kind of covered up his eye a little bit. So I'll be going back in and um, painting his little eye back on. So to make the teal, I'm scooping out green. And then I'll rinse my brush. And then I'll add some blue. And just enough blue until I get to the color teal that I want. Oh, here we go. That was quick. Beautiful. That's exactly what I was looking for. So this will be good. And just go around a little ring around his shell. Ooh, I think. I think we should name our turtle as well. So we have Sarah the starfish. Let's see, our turtle can be named, how about if we name our turtle, hmm, George. All right, we have Sarah the starfish and George the turtle. I bet they run into each other in the ocean sometimes. That would be fun. Okay, cool. And we're almost done painting in our shell. Oh my goodness. I wonder if anyone out there, any of my friends is painting their turtle like a rainbow. I have never seen a rainbow turtle before, so I would love to see that. If I would have thought early enough, I would have made this turtle a rainbow. All right, so this is super fun. This is George, my turtle. Hi. And I need to add his little eye back on. So I'm going to just get a teeny tiny little bit of black. And add his little eyeball back on. All right, now we can set George aside to dry. All right, I have a feeling that maybe I'm just going to paint our little face on Sarah because I think that maybe my transfers are a little bit big for the starfish shape size that I made. So I'm just going to add the face on with a paintbrush. So here is Sarah, our starfish. Nice to meet you. Here we go. All right. I would love to show you one more transfer that is metallic. So we have a star, a shamrock, a heart, and a diamond. So we can choose which one we want to put on our rainbow rock 
or I guess maybe we could put two because this is a very giant rock. Um, how about, let's do our star. I think this star would look cool. So maybe we just do one and then we can put some exciting star rays around it. So just like we did before, let's cut out our star. Transfer. And we'll peel away the clear paper. And we want to put it face down onto our rock. And push down a little bit because it's a little bit sticky and that will keep it in place. We'll get our sponge a little bit wet and wet our transfer. Now this rock is nice and flat on the top. So our transfer didn't really have to mold around the rock as much as it did for George, our turtle. But we do want to still make sure that it's wet enough that the transfer is actually staying on the rock and not on the paper. Oh, that worked out really well. Yay! I love the shiny holographicness of these metallic transfers. Oh, so just a quick note with the transfers. The transfers are not actually weather resistant. So if you add a transfer to your rack, you might need to put a little bit of like clear nail polish or some kind of something over top of it to prevent it from disappearing if it does get rained on. So I just dried um, some water off of our rack so we can add a couple little design lines around it. And then this rack will be done too. So let's just add some, I think white lines around it will be cool. There we go. Yeah. Oh, I love it. So I think I'm going to share my rocks. I'm going to hide my rocks in the park the next time I go for a walk in the park. I'm going to leave them either on the trail or by a tree for someone else who comes and goes on a walk at the park. And they can find it. And I think that would be really cool. So. Let me just show you really quick how to put our stickers on the back, just like this. Just peel that off. And then you can put it right on the back of your rack. And now your racks are all ready to be put out by in playgrounds or by the park or give to someone and then they can take a picture of it and post it up on our social media pages. Hashtag creativity for kids. All right, guys, thank you so much for creating with me. Um, here we go. So wasn't that so much fun? I love doing these rock painting classes because there's so many different things that you can do. And thank you for participating. I love hearing your votes and your ideas. And I can't wait to see what you created as well. Um, look for an email coming soon on how you can watch the video again. And if you want to show us what you made, like I said, have an adult or an older friend go ahead and take a picture and put it up on our Facebook or Instagram account. And I hope you can join me tomorrow when we do the Grow and Glow Terrarium which is also one of our favorite kits. And I am really excited to do this with you. So I can't wait to create with you again. Bye.